here we are just outside of Tucson, Arizona, looking at a disjunct population. All that means is it's a population far removed. It's a subpopulation far removed uh, and separated by a pretty large distance from the much larger population of the plant further east. And this is also a great time to talk about something called edaphic endemism, which is when a plant is endemic, that is, it only grows on a certain kind of geology, in this case, limestone. And this right here is a great example of an edaphic endemic, this cactus species, Echinocactus horizontalonius. You can see it's got that beautiful spiral to it. Those spiraling ribs, this is a beast of a cactus too, probably one of the most drought tolerant cacti in North America. I've seen it growing open and exposed in some brutally hot, brutally dry places in West Texas. But here we are in Arizona, all right, a large gap, all right, basically across all of New Mexico because there's not much limestone down there. It's mostly volcanic, all right? West Texas is a mixture of limestone and volcanics and, you know, it's mostly uh, limestone further east towards Austin, Edwards Plateau, and then you start getting some Miocene volcanoes that were popping up, you know, 20 million, 15 million years ago. You get all the volcanics. This doesn't grow on volcanics for whatever reason. You grow it on, on you know, a, a volcanic soil in a pot and cultivation, it'll take, it'll be fine. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to die, but in habitat, you only see it growing on this limestone, and that's what this is. This is very old limestone right here. All right, Precambrian limestone. I think this is like roughly 600 million year old limestone, maybe a little bit younger. Ooh, it's got that tear pants texture to it. See that old, old calcareous ooze that was once at the bottom of an ocean, an ancient ocean. Calcareous ooze, say it with me. Out here, it's it's got a much different look than the Texas limestone too, but it is limestone. It will it will react with the hydrochloric acid and uh, and bubble up. It's calcium carbonate. Maybe a little bit different chemically. But anyway, it's a cool plant. The kino, Echinocactus horizontalonia subspecies Nicolzii. Who knows how long ago those two uh, those two populations split. But look at the way the limestone. See that dimpling on it? That's because of the way it reacts with the acidic rainwater. Ooh, it's very scabbard. Look at the texture of that. Almost like dog tooth karst. Dog tooth karst is just a very extreme ex example of what's going on here, which is... Uh, the reaction between acidic rainwater and a calcium carbonate based rock like this uh, this Precambrian limestone. God, yeah, you rarely get, I forgot, you know, you get out to these western deserts, the Sonora and the Mojave, you rarely get, well, the Mojave's got a shit ton of limestone, but at least in Arizona, there's just, it's a lot of volcanic. And it's all alluvium too. See how it's not just, it's not flat outcroppings of rock, it's all alluvium that's been washed out of the, uh, surrounding mountains very chunky look at this look at this big bastard look at that guy look at that that wonderful glaucous nature to him oh that blue look at the blue why you only grow on limestone why is that huh? is it the soil chemistry is that what it is is it the texture of the limestone the porosity of it the fact does it hold water a little bit more yeah, see, you got one coming up beneath this ironwood. Olnea tesota, notable for being a non-mimosoid. It's not in the mimosa subfamily like so many of the legume trees are. It's actually in Phoboidae. It's got, uh, you know, typical banner wings and keel uh, flower morphology to it. Beautiful when it lights up. Purple and white flowers. Yeah, just how old is that, though? 20, 20, 30 years? Remember, it's not a continuum. The growth here isn't a continuum. It's booms and busts stuff get here look at it see how does it get here but look at that texture you can see the water it's got streaks on it from the way it erodes from the way it weathers it chemically weathers the water runs down it and reacts with that limestone again limestone is very reactive with the uh, acidic fluids all right gypsum even more so looks like a turd inside there see that god knows what that was if that's some you know old uh, organic material or what but you're just basically looking at old ocean floor Calcareous Zeus, look at the little baby saguaros. These saguaros don't give a shit. You know, limestone, volcanic, they're growing whatever. But many cacti do, like all those Texas ones, including that the uh, echinocactus. Horizontalonius, horizontalonius monk. Look at that guy, see him? How are they so tough? Look, here's a little one. See that? Because they got that glaucous epidermal tissue, probably some. Decent farina, some decent epicuticular wax on there. They got spines acting like a shade cloth. 
and, uh, and then their fruits, which is right there, is that little cotton top thing, you know. But we were down down the other side of the mountain. We're down there on a you know alluvial volcanic deposits, just little chunks of rock that have weathered out of the surrounding volcanic mountains. Didn't see any of them. You get to the limestone, boom, they start popping up. All right, and again, you know, some of the some of the plants, the saguaros and shit, they don't care. Only a tesoda, ironwood doesn't care. But a uh, kind of cactus needs that limestone. You don't have limestone, you're not going to get it. Some context. See, so there was, you know, this stuff's all washed out of the mountains up there. But a lot of it's been cemented together with that caliche, that white stuff. And caliche, caliche, you know, however you want to pronounce it. Dirty limestone. Look at all that brown shit all over. It looks like somebody sprayed shit, you know. Like they were doing some of those videos. What are those scat videos? What the fuck? It's just amazing stuff. What is that? Is that old organic material? What? Look at this little uh, mammillaria. Now it's cochimea growing in a crevasse. Look at that. So many spines, it just appears white. So many radial spines, it just appears white. Woo! Is it a Myriotris or Chylanthes now? Or what is that? It looks like a... Oh, no, it's uh, Astrolepis, huh? You can see volcanics over there. Probably quite old volcanics. So right here, we're still in the limestone. You see that? A little ferro cactus getting that in with those betalane pigments at the end. Distal ends of those recurved spines. See that? Oh, that's so nice. Isn't that nice? Let's see. We got Bursera. Bursera microphylla. That one of the plants colloquially known as elephant trees. See, it's got that, that stem succulent trunk, right? They don't get that big in uh, southern Arizona. But they're in the frankincense family Burseraceae, which is sister to the poison ivy family Anacardiaceae, which I only learned... During a podcast that there was Susan Pell and uh, Jonathan Mitchell about a podcast about a fucking anacardiaceae. I smell that, yeah. See, you got all those resins, all this intense uh, secondary chemistry producing those illustrious smells. No doubt the uh, deetering micro herbivores. Look at that. Said they have grooves for their scent, right? See, bursar of microphylla just growing right there in a shelter. They always tend to grow up against the wall, kind of on a mountaintop, maybe because they get more fog, they get more well, water vapor collecting, or you know, the water vapor rises, hits the uh, hits the rock, maybe settles in upon them. I don't know. Maybe it's a protection from frost, who knows? But either way, always an imp always an impressive thing to see. Of course, you get Bursera simaruba down there in Florida, like quote unquote gumbo limbo. Look at this too, this nice astrolepis, see? Same same plant right here. This is just when it's dry and dormant, and then this is when it's uh, when it's out. Beautiful fern. Pteridaceae is the family there. Look at this. Look at the scales on. Oh, like stars. Trichomes looking like stars. Trichomes and scales looking like stars. A starry night. I think that's why they called it the Astrolepis, the star fern. I think that's Cochisensis. Don't quote me though. We got Trixis californica here too. Yellow, uh, yellow daisy-like uh, member of the sunflower family. It's a shrub. Suppose you could smoke the leaves, or it, they historically were smoked by native people. No, they've got a very nice uh, fragrance to them. You get Trixis inula in Texas. They're in the Mutisioid subfamily, which is mostly in South America. Mutisioid subfamily of Asteraceae. Looks like shit now, because it's kind of dry. Look at that beautiful succulent trunk on that uh, elephant tree, that Bursera. Waterman Mountains. You know, 20,000 years ago during the Pleistocene, there used to be junipers and Pinus monophylla here, the pinion pine. And we know that thanks to the pack rats. You know, the pack rats are hoarders. You know, they collect all the twigs and berries and stuff. They were collecting twigs and berries of the junipers and the pines 20,000 years ago. And then, you know, stashing them in their little middens and what the shit. And then, you know, encrusting it in a thick coat of urine, etc. And so you go into those little those little middens, you know, little nooks and crannies in the rock, maybe little caves, and find evidence of uh, pines and junipers on these mountaintops, these small mountaintops, kind of like more of a hill. Uh, where there are no longer junipers and pines, nowhere to be found except you know 2,000 feet, 3,000 feet in elevation higher. Pretty, pretty interesting. The Pleistocene was a different time here. Look at that beautiful escarpment of limestone. Look at all that. Saguaros don't care. Echinoceras doesn't care. The hedgehogs see that. Still got that kind of you know the, the shitty, the shitty stain in it. The uh, the the brown. So uh, I guess it's just organic material. You know impurities. Get your crease so cut some of that off, put it in your shower. A little too chilly for snakes right now. And of course that uh, Parkinsonia looking really nice. Look at that. God, I love limestone fucking A. I need to talk to a carbonate geologist. Go on, Leo. He's going up there. See, all we got to do is put a little cross up there with a the little shrine and some candles and tapestries and stuff. It'll 
it looked perfect nice. Uh, that's probably all the same clone right here, the Cylindra Puncha Bigelovia, aka the Teddy Bear Choya. They fall down, the arms break off really easy. The arms will break off in some of those mean desert winds and they root readily. They're not even buried. They'll still just laying on top of the soil. They'll send a little root, root down, looks like a little foot, and get going. And they can do that because they got that succulent stem that's storing all that water and carbohydrates they got enough energy to produce roots even though they may go without rain for upwards of uh, a year or two. God, look at those fucking fruits. Some of these are even sterile too. I got a lady I know studies them. They're sterile. They don't even produce, you know, viable seed because they're just, the population's been cloning itself for how many thousands of years. Amazing plant. Not nice to have embedded in your flesh though. Back when I used to drink, I had a friend do it just for shits and giggles. I took my shirt off. He was just throwing, I don't know, probably six or seven limbs at me, but I don't need to talk about that. Oh, look at that. Look how deep that goes. Holy shit. It's old, old, uh, old well, old water pit. Look at that. God damn. Probably 40 feet deep at least. That whole ridge is limestone right there. The bedding plane was kind of like that. It's kind of slumped, forming a little saddle. Look at this saguaro. See all the new growth, see? Old spines, fresh spines. So that's about, I don't know, what did it put on? Probably in the last year or two. It's probably eight inches of new growth. And look at all those trichomes coming out the aerials next to the spines, forming a little felt. Look at that, that's nice, little Q-tips. Saguaro fruit is very delicious I hear. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. Edaphic endemism, como se dice nice. Don't forget that. That's all I got. Have a great day. Go fuck yourself. Bye.